we are the sum total of our experiences and our enlightenments in life. I met this man, he was uh, past retirement age, and he told me a little story. And he said to me that uh, all his life he worked diligently at a job so that he could have all the coverage, all the health insurance, and all the benefits and everything, and on top of that, get a retirement after the 30 years or whatever it was, 30 years, 35 years. And then at that time, at retirement, he would be able to do all these wonderful things with his life. And then he continued, what actually happened is that just a few months before he retired, one of his lungs collapsed. I don't believe he even smoked. He could not do any of the things he had planned all his life in his retirement. life hackers and professional frugalists and live abroad enthusiasts. Today we're going to talk about, we had a question come up say, uh, is health care expensive in Ecuador? And generally speaking, is health care cheaper abroad? And I wanted to address this question in a little bit of a personal experience. I'm looking back at 30 years, at 30 years of my life as it regards to health insurance. When I look back at 30 years, I recall that 30 years ago, I what happened is I got bit by a black widow spider on the back of my neck. And I went into anaphylactic uh, shock and I had to rush uh, to the emergency room and they told me that I could have died. So I could have died before I reached even my 30th birthday from a black widow spider bite back of my neck. Now, back then, we didn't have any insurance, but I did have the businesses, and I paid cash for everything. But I do remember that it was expensive. And I thought to myself, wow, that's a lot of money. And, and I don't remember the exact figure, but it was like maybe $1,800 or maybe $2,000. It was like a a thousand dollars for the for the ambulance and another thousand dollars for the lab or 800 or something like that back then the average monthly uh, wage household uh, wage in america was about that so you can figure translating it to today's wages you know the same amount a month's worth of uh, income for a whole household in the united states of america fast forward 30 years i had another brush with a health care uh, issue. Now, I want you to know that in the time in between the 30 years, I did not have any quote-unquote health care needs whatsoever. You're looking at that one incident, and it was about $2,000, and then 30 years later, it happened in Ecuador, where we, you might know if you've seen that video about the best investment in Ecuador, uh, where we talk about what happened to our health, so I won't go into it here. But our expenses there were all out-of-pocket expenses to going to a lab, in Ecuador and uh, buying a bunch of prescriptions that we never never used and we used some but we dumped the rest and so the whole the whole expense on that was like five hundred dollars so the total in a 30-year period that I actually spent out of pocket and this includes costs in the United States and abroad eighteen hundred plus five hundred about twenty three hundred dollars or maybe twenty five hundred dollars over a 30-year period now, my background on this is you might say, well, how come you didn't buy insurance or whatever? I uh, started out when I was 15. I developed an interest in bodybuilding and sport nutrition. So I started studying sport nutrition back when I was 15, and the rest is history. I just became totally enamored with uh, studying 
health uh, issues and eventually we became good health uh, advocates. The bottom line is in a 30 year period, uh, the 2300 to $2,500 that we spent out of pocket in the States and abroad uh, amortizes to, when I do the math here, we're looking at about uh, over a 30 year period, um, it's uh, $1,800 is about $60 and then the additional $500 is about $17, so that's about $77 to $100 a month if we, if we calculate that I spent $2,500 total, somewhere in there, in actual out-of-pocket expenses for health care in a 30-year period of my life. Uh, a lot of people say, well, what about going forward? What about the next 30 years? You know, you're getting older and something could happen, blah, blah, blah. You know how people think. And so let's just play it for instance, if we did have some sort of catastrophic thing and we're abroad and it's cheaper abroad and it costs $10,000, people say, well, you can only get $100,000 in the States, you can easily spend that on this and that and the other. But let's just say since we are a live abroad enthusiasts that we're abroad and something comes up and we have to spend $10,000 in the next 30 years. Well, I did the math on that and I added it, I added the additional $10,000 to the $2,300, which comes to around $12,300 over a 60-year period now, amortized over a 60-year period, comes out to about $205 a year, even with a catastrophic $10,000 expense, which is very large uh, when you're talking about the live abroad uh, realm. So even with such a thing, uh, the average would be $205 a year over a 60-year period. So now my question is this, that's $205 per year you know are you spending two hundred five dollars per year on your health insurance you know how much do people spend I hear people spending a thousand dollars a month five hundred dollars a month just ridiculous amounts that make no sense to somebody like me that is a personal opinion so my yearly average for the previous 30 years or so yearly average expense for health care averages $77 a year. And I don't say that to brag. I say that to say, well, first off, understand that that figure is mostly from the U.S. You know, I say that to say that my program will put you on a lower stress level. You know, if you're ready to make a change in your life and you're ready to, you know, have a, a less stressful existence and less worry about finances, less worry about health, uh, the lifestyle that is promoted as a byproduct of what I teach in my material, which comes from exactly the lifestyle I was living, which was pretty stress, low stress lifestyle, uh, one of a material abundance, uh, one that doesn't worry about uh, insurance, obviously. <laughs> you know, and that's not a that's not a feeling that's suspended in the air. It it totally sits on a foundation, on a solid foundation of proper choices in life where you shift your choices to live in such a way that you have more time, you have more freedom, you have more availability of material possessions. All of that works in together because isn't that what we spend our time, most of our young years doing is either paying for material possessions or and or uh, securing our retirement. So it's all part of the big picture and it's all sitting on the foundation of choices and lifestyle and it comes down to knowledge, how to do things and I can show you how to do it in my program. And remember that we are the sum total of our experiences and our enlightenments in life. We become enlightened in so many different ways. I 
met this man. He was uh, past retirement age, and he told me a little story. And he said to me that uh, all his life he worked diligently at a job so that he could have all the coverage, all the health insurance, and all the benefits and everything, and on top of that, get a retirement after the 30 years or whatever it was. And then at that time, at retirement, he would be able to do all these wonderful things with his life. And then he continued, what actually happened is that just a few months before he retired, one of his lungs collapsed. He could not do any of the things he had planned all his life in his retirement. None of the benefits he had that he had been paying for all, all of those years were able to remove the collapsed lung. There was nothing he could do about it. And so in conclusion, he told me if I would have had a crystal ball and I would have known this, I would have gladly just lived in a shack just so I could be free and enjoy my life now. He feels like he was cheated. And so the bottom line is nobody really knows what's going to happen in life and a lot of people make all these assumptions on what other people need and what they should do and shouldn't do. But having said all that, if we wanted to be practical about it and say, well, let's just say that you did want to have a procedure at some point in your life, how would you handle that? And how have we handled things like dental health and dental care and, and such and other uh, conditions that come up? And we will share all that and explain all that in our course coming up. It is coming up, we are working on it. Please go to the link uh, underneath the video and let us know you're interested in more information. It's totally free to, to sign up. There's no obligation whatsoever. Uh, but that's uh, one of the things that we will cover in the video that is included in our life hacking and professional frugalist perspective in life. Thank you very much for watching. You know what to do if you like the video. And thanks for supporting the channel. Bye-bye.